What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another update on Transformers Rise of the Beast. We're just two months away from getting to witness the live action debut of the Beast era cast as they share the screen with the G1 Autobots. And it feels so surreal because it feels like just yesterday we were wondering if we'd even see the likes of Optimus Primal and Cheetor grace the silver screen. Because if you remember Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who's been an executive producer on these films since the very beginning, stated that it wouldn't be possible. He mentioned that it would be a difficult task to even fit the Beast War alumni into a live action Transformers film. As you know, these movies put a heavy emphasis on realism, which is why Michael Bay opted to utilize military vehicles for the Decepticons. This is also why we never really got to see the ultimate villain Unicron get a proper rollout because of the far out fictitious nature of the character. So that version we got in Transformers The Last Night was literally grounded in reality, or should I say the Earth. But thankfully, the producers have come to their senses and have found a way to bring the Maximals to the forefront. There have been many theories that have suggested that it will be by way of time travel, which has always been a key component in the Beast Wars lore. While engaged in battle, the Maximals and Predacons found themselves plunging through a time slash space phenomenon created by the Transwarp device, sending them 300 years into the future after the events of the G1 Transformers. In the Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer, it's implied that the Maximals have been on Earth for hundreds, if not thousands of years before the Autobots even arrived. We see the civilians of Peru essentially celebrating with floats that mirror the alt modes of the likes of Cheetor and Rhinox, not to mention that the outward appearance of the Maximals look extremely weathered and battle damaged, which is another indication that they've been here for quite some time. Something else that aimlessly insinuates that the movie will have some kind of time traveling components to it is the fact that Optimus Primal says, of all the threats from both your past and future, you've never faced anything like this to Optimus Prime. And I've already thrown my theories out there of this possibly alluding to an evil Optimus Prime from the future who's been reformatted to be Scourge, and there's a high probability that he's been tasked by Unicron to obtain whatever it is they'll be looking for in this movie. Anyways, since we're creeping up on this release date, we've been seeing a lot of toys to which you guys have been asking me why I haven't made any videos on them. And to be quite honest with you guys, I just didn't feel the need to harp on each new product associated with this film. Like I know the toys in the actual shows and movies go hand in hand, but talking about action figures just isn't my thing. I'm more so into breaking down the commercials and trailers, which surprisingly there hasn't been a lot of. I mean, we've gotten some new stuff, but a lot of it is reused scenes from the first trailer. And it kind of feels good that the producers are being a bit more reserved than they were when the Bayformers were still a thing. Like there's going to be a major element of surprise because we haven't seen all the big moments outside of that awesome battle royale. We have yet to see all the robot modes in motion for the Maximals, and there are others such as Nightbird and the Terracons that haven't been featured prominently in any of these promotions. Like you see them here and there, but they're not just right there for everybody to see. And if I'm not mistaken, we haven't even heard what Scourge will sound like, which I've been anxious to hear. Like, Peter Dinklage's casting as this character couldn't have been more perfect. He already has a very powerful voice, but I have a nagging suspicion that the editors are going to dial it up to a thousand with all the cool modulations they use for these robots. Speaking of voices, about a week ago we finally got the official reveal for Cheetor's voice actor. That's something that was never really mentioned in any of the IMD credits or by the officials when the movie was first announced. But finally, after months of waiting, we now have our voice for the Ultra Tech Cat. And that is an actor by the name of Tangayi Cherisa. I'm not that familiar with this actor or his voice work, so I'm not sure what direction they'll take him in or this interpretation of Cheetor. All I know is that he's Zimbabwean, so I'm not sure if he's going to have an African accent or he'll just have something that mirrors what the show had. I'm still a bit disappointed that Paramount didn't really bother to get any of the original voice actors back to voice their respective characters, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. We still have Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime, and I'm pretty sure once Megatron makes his appearance in this new continuity, he'll be voiced by Frank Welker. I'm not sure if this version of Cheetor will be the young and sometimes overzealous character we've seen in the original cartoon, but I'm hoping it is because that's what makes him unique. Because that attitude causes him to often butt heads with Optimus Primal. Like, that's what makes all the characters within the Beast Wars series different. At the end of the day, they all have their own overarching goals, and I hope the writers take notes from the series and allow the characters to actually develop over time. That's something we don't really see in these movies. Actual character progression. 
So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what these new voice performers bring to the table. Hopefully they capture the heart and souls of the Maximals. But anyways, I guess it's only right that we talk about some of the toys since you guys have been asking me to do a breakdown on them and give my thoughts. And what I will say is that they all look really good. Way better than the Age of Extinction and the Last Night toy line. That line of Transformers toys was arguably the worst because they looked extremely off from what their movie counterparts look like. And you guys may have heard me say this in another video, but the last two Bayformers movies designs weren't really made with practicality in mind when it comes to transforming. Which is why the on-screen transformations were very scarce and when we did see them they looked horrible. It was almost like the editors were cutting corners to get these humanoid looking robots to convert to their vehicle modes. And that in return had a negative impact on the toys. Just look at these smash changes. I rest my case. Speaking of smash changes, we've gotten a better line that blows the AOE line out of the water. About a week ago, Takara Tomy began launching their promotional campaign for Transformers Rise of the Beast, or Beast Awakening as it's been labeled in Japan. They uploaded a new Transformers Smash Changes Optimus Primal commercial featuring Akiko Wada, a veteran and famous singer in Japan who was recently announced to be the first brand ambassador for the Transformers Beast Awakening toy line. In her first collaboration, she presents the Smash Changers Optimus Primal by transforming into the iconic truck monkey. And once again, when it comes to toy commercials, Japan just reigns supreme. This commercial looks fun and over the top and makes you want to just go out and buy a Smash Changer or Popping Popper Optimus Primal as they like to call it. So far we've gotten Smash Changers for Optimus Primal and Rhinox just came out with a Smash Changer. And the Optimus Prime Changer that was previously packaged under the Bumblebee Buzzworthy toy line has officially been repackaged under the Rise of the Beast packaging. But on the flip side, we've gotten another Another figure from the ROTB line that has been repackaged under the Buzzworthy line in the form of Scourge. I'm not sure why, but it is what it is, man. What I will say is that we're still seeing these different forms for him and Optimus Prime that haven't been shown off in any of the trailers or CG renders. As opposed to their diesel truck modes, they are sporting these man 8x8 military truck modes and you've heard me say that there's a possibility that this could be Optimus Prime's new alt mode at the tail end of the film. Keep in mind that we've seen this alt mode in two different toy forms, one for the Smash Changer and another for the Battle Changer. And if you're a fan of Transformers Prime, then this vehicle form most likely gives off heavy Beast Hunter Optimus Prime vibes, which I won't be surprised that they labeled this form as such, especially considering the fact that he's dealing with the Beast Formers in this movie. But nonetheless, it's still a toss up if we'll see this thing in the actual movie or not. Considering the fact that this seems to be the only toy in the Rise of the Beast toy line that boasts the Energon blades compared to the other toys, I'm just going to go ahead and place my bet that the robot mode we saw at the end of the trailer using the blades is akin to the smash and battle changer toys but we'll just have to wait and see now last but not least we got to talk about these weaponizers they've been in this weird place since they were announced because we don't really know if they represent what we will be seeing in the actual movie or not essentially what the weaponizers are is a renamed gimmick that used to be called battle masters from the war for cybertron siege toy line this allows smaller transformers to change into weapons for the bigger transformers to wield and to me this feels like a simple marketing ploy similar to what we got with the war for cybertron show like i can count on one hand how many times this was used in the actual series. So far we've seen toys such as Optimus Prime will come with a small version of something that looks like Tigertron who transforms into a bow blaster and Optimus Prime who comes with a wolf called Chain Claw that can transform into a chainsaw. And so far none of these weaponizer characters have been credited on any sites such as IMDB or Wikipedia and I think that reconfirms that they're just there for toy marketing purposes only. But there's been another toy reveal that makes me wonder if I should recant these thoughts and that's Scorpinox. This guy's reveal came out of nowhere because I thought we were done getting more roster updates, but now we have Scorpinox who's yet another OG Beast Wars character. Not to be confused with the Scorpinox from the G1 series though. Anyways, a few days ago this guy's weaponizer figure surfaced online. Staying true to his name, he can transform into a scorpion and he'll come with a partner named Sandspear who converts from a scorpion to a spear. Now what's interesting about Scorpinox is similar to the other robots who've already been confirmed to be in the movie, he also has a CG render. This leads me to believe that he'll be making an appearance in the movie too. But, and this is a huge but, we're talking Pixar moms but, there are other characters similar to those small weaponizers like Tigertron and Chainclaw who also have their own CG renders as well on all these packagings. 
We recently got the reveal for characters like Skull Cruncher, who's essentially a crocodile who converts into a blaster. And to my surprise, even Cheetor and Rhinox have toys that can convert into weapons. So at this point, I just don't know what's real and what isn't real, and it's gonna be a proper representation of this movie. It'll be cool to see Rhinox transform into this submachine gun for Optimus Primal to hold, or we could see Cheetor change into this sick looking arm saber thingy. But it all just feels like wishful thinking. Supposedly we are getting a new trailer this week or maybe at the beginning of next week uh, so we'll just have to wait and see if any of these things manifest in the actual trailers. Anyways that's all I got for you guys today. What are your thoughts on this news? Do you think any of these things will appear in the Transformers Rise of the Beast or do you feel it's just for marketing's sake? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you to like or dislike the video. It don't have to be a thumbs up. You can give it a thumbs down if you want. But if you truly enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and family members on all the different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. You're